What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out Major Heat on Shane McMahon, WWE talent, showdown after the Royal Rumble and Ronda Rousey plans. Uh, there's been a lot of interesting things that's been happening uh, ever since the Royal Rumble ended this past uh, Saturday. A lot of interesting developments have uh, been going on behind the scenes. Uh, apparently, there are some people upset with uh, mainly the talent, some of the talent we're kind of upset with how things went down at this year's Royal Rumble. We're going to check that out, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Uh, and let's get right into this bad boy. To talk news is WWE morale low after the Royal Rumble. There's major heat on Shane McMahon after his Rumble return. And WWE has no idea what the plans are for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. Sounds about right. Yep. Subscribe and enable notifications. Sounds about always right. on for that's, daily that's WWE wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk. So this weekend was the most rumbleful time of the year and like Christmas sometimes is, it was actually pretty boring and the only thing you can really do is drink an entire bottle of wine about it or a W-H-I-N-E about it on Twitter, which plenty of people did in order to voice their frustrations with this year's event. Usually WWE's best being, well just really, really quite dull. Perhaps mm -hmm. the most exciting thing all show was the WrestleMania sign setting itself on fire. No Some of you guys that were actually there, y'all sent us footage of the WrestleMania sign being on fire. That's insane. All those pointing at the, the sign, they caught up now. <laughs> it's the UFC guys, man. The UFC people. They pointed at the sign and it just caught on fire, man. <laughs> Not once, but twice in protest of how boring the entire thing was. Now, PW Insider claimed to have heard from a number of sources within the company that the Rumble was plagued by constant changes to the lineup, the order of eliminations, interactions between the talent and spots. One source noted that the men's match changed 20 times over the course of the days leading up to the event, with many blaming this back and forth as the thing that made the match itself slow and lacking any real excitement, and also times. being produced just really badly. They yeah. Missed filming so many eliminations. Now the same was said of the women's rumble match as well. One anonymous talent said that this had left morale incredibly low backstage after the event, stating, we were all in a whirlwind. Just as you had your roll and spots down, everything started over and over, and now most of us were back to square one. It changed again and again and again. It wasn't an easy night even before we hit the ring. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh... It, it, you can tell it, it just came off a little bit disjointed, especially on the men's side of thing, uh, side of things. I know the Kofi Kingston spot was a horrible botch. Um, that you can tell that wasn't supposed to happen, obviously. But I will say this to give credit to Kofi: out of all the years that became like a mainstay in the men's Royal Rumble, that's the only time it ever he ever botched it, like or it, it didn't work out. So that, that's the only thing I can say. It, the fact that he's been doing it for so long and, and that was the one time it didn't work out, that's, you know, kind of the, the only disappointment. But you can just tell, man. And the fact that he said they changed it at least 20 times potentially, like, damn, bro. Like, these are things that are supposed to kind of be set. It's like WWE, they wait to the last minute to set put things into motion like the day of like no bro you need to have things set so people can already have a idea of what how the match is going to flow what it's going to look like you know just just have it be prepared because you end up with boring schluck like this so i don't know yeah of course because if a three-hour episode of raw turns out bad it i don't even know what the word schluck means i meant to say schlock i don't even know what that means it, it's just it's just just messy. There we go. You you get it. <laughs> Vince rips up the script on the day of the show. Of course, the Rumble is, which is a careful marriage of spots, story, and key interactions between 30 different people. That's really going to suffer. It's being bunged together at the last minute. Now, after all the reports of WWE making moves to some Forbidden Door-style entrance, legends, and loads of returns, one of the very few surprise entrants in this year's Men's Rumble was just Shane McMahon. The I was surprised. I legitimately was surprised when watching it on stream, but then I started to realize like, whoa, this, they could have gave that spot to somebody else. I get it. They did it for a cheap pop, but once again, it's like, yo, you could gave that, that spot definitely deserved to go to somebody else, but did it really, when you think about it, because ultimately Brock won it all, so did it really matter? Yeah, put that into question. The boss is son. 
I really feel like a few people turned WWE down hard this year. Attach myself to your poison brand? No thank you. In news that requires a little pinch of salt, though they did have a good track record hitting into the rumble with rumours, ringside news are reporting that there is a substantial amount of heat on Shane O'Mac after the men's rumble. They said that Shane was given the role of lead producer and writer for the match and repeatedly tried to book the entire affair around himself and was adamant about putting himself over. I mean, at least that would have been wow. one person featured properly and getting over, so that would be a slight improvement over what we actually got. Now, on the day of the show, Shane was reportedly confrontational. He openly buried Jamie Noble and was fighting everyone to book himself into the final group of wrestlers, Why? which he did. The final four of the Rumble was Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre, Bad Bunny, and Shane McMahon. A damning picture of what WWE has become. A source reportedly told Ringside News that when Shane is more impactful in the Rumble than Big E or Owens, even people who don't normally complain are complaining loudly today. Yeah, man. And why did he need to be the mainstay? No, you're not even an active competitor. No, just be, no, no. That, that's my only response to that. That's not what's up. Once again, we can't get invested to the stars we have, the wrestlers we have now, when you got Shane and Man coming back to steal the spotlight, to be the last, one of the last four people in the Men's Royal Rumble. We've got more on what WWE has planned next for hot up and coming star Shane McMahon in just a second after this word from today's sponsor. Fiverr. Shade and shaded animation, including appropriately right that. now, the Rage and You Screw. Lab right for free. And if you enter the cutting, at the very least, you can take out your frustration. So Shane is reportedly booked for both the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and WrestleMania 38. Oh, Melzer noted in his Sunday update that Shane is on the Mania card, but as of a few days ago, that hasn't been finalized, but Shane did eliminate Kevin Owens though, so yeah, that's what's happening, isn't it? That, that's what's happening. Done that before, we'll do it again. So yeah. look out for more Shane on February 19th. I do not want to see Shane and Kevin Owens again. I, I just don't care. I don't. Oh man, bro, it's it's like the booking ideas is so awful. I hope that doesn't happen, but no one WWE. There's a good chance it'll probably happen. Tenth in Jeddah, notably the last time that Shane was there, he beat Roman Reigns at Super Showdown in 2019. Can't wait. Speaking of Roman, his match with Seth Rollins at the Rumble ended on a bit of a bum note as Roman held the guillotine choke despite Seth making it to the ropes, getting himself disqualified and ending his undefeated pay-per-view streak, which was like 700 days, something like that. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said WWE had Roman Reigns do the post-match chair beatdown on Seth Rollins so they would boo him instead of booing the match finish. Now, this, this might be crazy, folks, but why not just not do the finish Instead of having to do something else that would get you booed to stop a boo that you never had to actually. This is understandable. I'm still, I like that he went rogue, but I still am in agreement with people. I understand people not liking the finish. If anything, he should have just, it should have been Seth Rollins passing out. You can, you can still have that same finish if you just have Seth Rollins pass out. Have him pass out. That'll make, it'll give Seth a more of a badass appearance. He didn't tap. He made him pass out, and then you beat the crap out of him with the chair. You get the same effect, but the the intentional DQ, I can understand why people felt that way. Granted, that's the way the route they went. They decided, hey, we're just going to have you go make a road. So. Actually start. It's like trying to put out a fire you started with more fire. The DQ did mean, though, that Roman managed to retain his Universal Championship, likely setting up another confrontation with Brock Lesnar, who absolutely walked to victory in the slow motion men's Rumble match. Yep. This leaves a big question mark, though, over what will happen with the WWE Championship that Bobby Lashley won earlier in the night. Well, us fans are not the only ones with the question mark, as according to Russell Votes on Twitter, Lesnar had to be the winner here. I'm told they legitimately have no idea what the WWE title match at Mania is going to be at this point. Avoid the old pigeonhole. Now we'll obviously wow. find out tonight who WrestleMania. <laughs> they don't even have you're supposed to have you're supposed to have this. You're supposed to know what you want to do damn near last year. <laughs> Before the rumble starts, you know how you want to set things up. You should this should be a something you storyboard months prior to. They don't even know. The Royal Rumble's done they don't they don't even know what they want to do. Who's going to fight Big E? That's, once again, it's WWE waiting to the very last minute. Who Brock's going to pick as his WrestleMania opponent, but currently the reports all seem to point in the direction 
of Roman Reigns. Obviously. And that leaves the WWE Championship in a bit of a weird spot as it's likely not going to headline a night of WrestleMania with Ronda Rousey likely getting to main event the other night of the show. Speaking of Rousey, how easy is segues when everything flows together? Her Rumble win gives her the choice of champion to chase heading into WrestleMania. Before the show kicked off, Dave Meltzer noted that WWE are planning to have Ronda and Charlotte Flair go toe-to-toe -to -toe at this year's show of shows. Their final two spots in the Rumble could very well be a knot. Don't want to see it. I don't. It should be Ronda and Becky. If you're gonna, I'm, I get it. Once again, I have to make this disclaimer. I'm not just thrilled that Ronda won the Women's Royal Rumble, but I get why they did it for the bottom dollar. They're trying to sell tickets for this year's WrestleMania. I get that. But I think the more selling point, it's not Charlotte. It is uh, It's Becky. That's the selling point. That's the match we originally won years ago, but Charlotte was inserted. This needs not this this match this time should be Becky and Ronda. That's it. If you're gonna go if you're gonna go this route, Becky and Ronda, those are the sell. That's the match you want to have. Not fucking Charlotte. I'm sorry, Charlotte, cool, but I I think a lot of us as fans we're just tired of seeing Charlotte at the top anyway. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's it's really gotten redundant with her as well. We get it. She's Ric Flair's daughter, but it's like, it's like there's no other women wrestlers. Granted, they don't even promote other women wrestlers like that. So, it, it, it once again, it comes down to WWE management. To this. Fight for Select are now reporting that the word backstage is that Rousey and Flair are penciled in for Mania, with Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair currently being planned for the Raw Women's title back. And I'm, you know what? I'm okay with that too. As long as Bianca gets a win back, cool, fine, I, I guess. But I just feel like uh, if you're going to do the, if you have Ron, how about this? How about you not even bring Ronda back for the Royal Rumble? How about this? How about you have Bianca? If you were going to do that, you could have Bianca be a two time Royal, a back to back two time Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble winner to face Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Didn't have. Sh Ronda come back, maybe come to SmackDown just randomly, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, to make her appearance to go after Charlotte. Now, yeah, there, there, you could have easily did that. You really could have easily did that. I'm just saying. Wow. Now, Charlotte has reportedly been pushing to work with Rousey for months now, and WWE were intensely keen to get the baddest woman on the planet back into action ASAP or after the birth of her daughter. I guess... We'll see how that match plays With out. With Flair I'm versus not, Rousey report. I'm not really that excited. In my to be the plan for Mania this year. Most people are probably like, uh, yeah, but what about the match that we actually want to see? You know, the one-on-one -on -one with Becky Lynch that we were all denied when WWE Omni flared Charlotte into the Mania triple threat three years ago. Well, Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, gosh, he has been a very busy boy this weekend, said it's in the works. He said, as soon as I did the reporting of the thing, people were just like, it should have been Becky. It should have been me. It should have been Becky, which at one point it was. But the whole thing is, is that as best as I can tell, the plan is for Ronda and Becky for the 2023 WrestleMania. Jeez. So it's not like the match isn't happening. Of course, people can get hurt. People can... Like a million things can happen between now and 2023, but that's basically the deal, is that she was going to come in for two WrestleManias. And with a new baby at home, people are speculating what Rousey's work rate was going to be like, whether her deal was now part-time, do the rumble, bosh a flare, have a break, come back for Mania. Meltz noted that she's in as a regular. I don't know what that means as far as, I don't know what it's going to be every week, but she's going to be a regular member of the roster in the sense that she's going to do the big shows and everything. So she's going to be part-time. She's not going to be a regular. You're just doing the big pay-per-views. She'll probably be around for SummerSlam, probably be around maybe for Survivor Series, whatever they consider a big pay-per-view at this point, because a lot of them don't really feel as big as they should be. But uh, yeah, so we may get it next year at WrestleMania. I'm not even sure if we'll actually care about it, but Maybe possibly if that's the deal that they're doing, then I, I guess. But I just think it would probably be a better deal to do it now since, you know, that's kind of what we, you know, what consensus with the fans really wanted. But hey, that's neither here nor there. I don't know what I'm talking about. A lot of us fans, we don't know what we're talking about. They got it. They got it under control in the WWE like that. It's not just you're going to come in, put over Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania and go on her merry way. One person not actually that bothered about Rousey returning is Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, who when interviewed by Ariel Helwani of BT Sports said, I already beat her. I already beat her, so I've got nothing left to prove. I mean, I'm still holding this championship that she gave me three years ago. 
almost three years ago. Becky obviously glazed over her own time after having a baby of her own there, but the point is their last encounter did end up with Bex going over big time and Rousey disappearing from the company. So what the Mania 2023 encounter will hold could be mega exciting and finally paying off something that we wanted. Yeah three years ago, at the point that it's going to happen four years ago. But it is Mania 2022 first, and we already know that Shane McMahon will be sticking around after his Rumble appearance. Bad Bunny can't be there because his tour dates clash, but the Bella Twins may be doing something at Mania 38. Oh, yay. Ooh. According to PW Insider, there is a belief the that we'll probably see more with back. Nikki and Brie Bella for WrestleMania 38. Brock Lesnar won the Men's Royal Rumble. Ronda Rousey won. Damn, that transition was fucking insane. Uh, do, do you guys care that the Bella Twins are coming back? Probably not. Um, this is cool. This is an informative video. I know a lot of things have been going on uh, right now uh, after the Royal Rumble. So I'm interested to see how things play out uh, in these upcoming weeks um, leading up to the Elimination Chamber. See how slowly WrestleMania is going to get put together. Hopefully it's, uh, it's enjoyable. Hopefully they put on the best matches possible. But to be honest with you, some of these matches, potential Shane and Kevin Owens match, I don't give a damn about that on the Elimination Chamber or at WrestleMania. Get that shit off my television, bro. Not as excited to see Ronda and Charlotte, but anything can happen. Maybe their segment, promo segments leading up to the match could be entertaining. I will say this. That little brawl they had outside, all three women, that little brawl they had in the backstage when Charlotte need the hell like she, i think she kicked her or need her i think she kicked her she kicked the hell out of ronda rousey when her head was sticking out the window that shit was pretty cool so maybe it could be exciting we will see but comment down below let me know would you guys be interested in seeing charlotte versus ronda at this year's wrestlemania or becky versus ronda at this year's wrestlemania or neither Actually, <laughs> let me know down below. I appreciate all the love and support. Road to Santa K. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See y'all next one. Peace.